The following presentation was recorded live in Cincinnati, Ohio, for Color Labs' 25th Annual Convention. This is Tape 27, Teaching Ideas. I think we're close enough to uh, 3.30 to start this session, and uh, want to welcome you all. The title of this session is Teaching Ideas, Your Successful Methods. Uh, my name is Larry Davenport. I'm the moderator. You may ask yourself, who is the panel for this session? And the panel starts at this table and goes back to the door. Uh, the success of this session is going to be upon the ideas that you bring to us, and so uh, my role in this session really is to be a facilitator to, to uh, bring your ideas out and have you participate. As it states in the, uh, the paragraph that's in the directions, it says, this session will start to build a library of teaching ideas that have been successful. I'm going to ask you for your best teaching gimmicks, uh, what works for you, what makes it easier for the dancers to understand the call that you're teaching. The example that was put in the, uh, the direction, the idea of considering the trick of a dollar bill in the middle of the square and asking everyone to keep an eye on it as they do a square through. So I'm going to ask you for your, your best ideas. Uh, some ground rules in here. If you can explain your idea without a square, that's great. If you need a square, uh, we will ask for a volunteer square to get up. At any given time, I'm, I've been thinking about it, at any given time we have a square on the floor, we can't work them to death so that uh, maybe they, uh, a square will stay on the floor for three examples and then we'll switch or, or something like that or until the square flat waves a, a white flag. Uh, one, of the th one, one of the reasons that we're running this is is that we all know what the definition of a call is and we all know that dancers learn at different rates and they learn at different paces um, you need more than one way to teach a call some people might respond by looking at that definition and said yeah I know how to do that or if you just simply give them the words of the definition some may need the example of a walkthrough uh, some may need a, you, for you to draw some type of a picture in their mind. If you want to put the concept of uh, turn a half, turn three quarters on the table, uh, you may want to talk in terms of a half is you turn to face the wall behind you. The wall behind you gives a picture of what they're doing. So those types of things. And there's, there's just, uh, so there's no substitution for having different ways to teach because not everyone is going to respond the same way. Uh, there's no substitution for or repetition in your teach so that people have a chance to, to really learn the call. But there's also no excuse for repetition without adding at least some type of variety because you don't want to build into the minds of your dancers that that's the way it's always done and that's the way they're always going to do it. Uh, as a small example, if you call swing through center's run and you never do anything but swing through center's run, you can call swing through and you don't have to call the center's run. <laughs> um, a small variation that would break that up if you call swing through center's trade, center's run, then now you've, you have given them two options of what might happen after the swing through. They might run or they might trade, and so you can build that kind of thing into it. Um, I'm going to give you just one example, and, and for this... Um, I don't think I need a square for this. I'll give you one example of something that I do with a grand square. I don't know if others do it, but sometimes trying to describe the whole definition of a grand square and say you're going to walk four sides of a box and all this kind of thing can take a little while to get the concept on the floor. Uh, when you have those dancers turn at each time, uh, the reality is they get two people they can face. They can either face their partner or they can face the opposite dancer. And if they're facing their partner when they turn, they better see that opposite dancer or vice versa. And so you can give them that type of a picture, and that tends to give them an idea of where are they going to turn. And the first times that you go through that, uh, you can say, who did I let you face or who were you supposed to face? And that it really sometimes that can work with a group to do it quite fast. Instead of describing sometimes that the first time through that full box, uh, you're either starting four steps away from somebody or you're in their face. And so you 
can tell them that if you're in somebody's face, you need to back up. If you've got somebody four steps away from you, you can go forward. So you can build that kind of picture. So that that's one example of, of, of what I use, for instance, for a grand square. At this point, I would like to uh, 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 stop with that as a brief intro and really start to try to get this rolling. would look for a show of hands at everybody that wants to participate today. And I should see all hands in the air. Where are they? Get all those hands in the air. Who would like to go first? Who has something? Uh, Keith Ferguson has a traveling, roaming microphone here. Anything we need to, to say here today needs to go on the microphone. Let us know if you would like a square for your example or if you can just talk us through it. Uh, do that as well. And also, one last ground rule. When you get the microphone, please state your name and where you're from. Good afternoon. Doug Holmes from... Ontario, north of Toronto and district. Just in addition to the example you were using, I have, for example, the head couples just take a couple of steps back out of that square, work only with the sides. They have no interference then when they're focusing on their own partner and that opposite lady. Have them dance it once or twice, have them back out, have the heads do their portion of it, Cuts out the interference the first couple of times through and then tell them we're going to mesh the whole thing together and they do. Another excellent suggestion. And one thing that if I didn't say it already, um, remember something might work with one dancer or another dancer. Something might work with different classes. And so if you have different approaches for any given night, you have a better chance for your dancer's success. In the back... Jim Emery from Long Island, New York. This is uh, building on your idea of the dollar in the center of the square for square through. I did that one night and I had a woman who was not getting it. So I finally gave her the example, think about driving around the block. And she got it. Thank you. Next. John Chevalier from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, going forward with square through, you have on the floor a pattern here. You take any one of the cross lines with a little dot in the middle. I'll take tape and put it in the middle of the square so that it's basically dividing the square. And when I'm teaching square through, I tell them, you cross one line, you have squared through one hand. You cross two lines, you square through two hands. Three lines, four lines. And the last line you go straight by on. It works for going around a square if you don't have a dollar to put in the middle. And uh, But it also teaches a couple of other things. Where is in? Anytime you're facing a line, you're facing in. You can tell them to pass through. They're not facing a line. They're facing out. At that point, turn and face out again. So you're turning, you're turning your back to one of the lines again. And you, when you get in to load the boat, we talk about, uh, uh, remember the lines on the floor. You know, which way are you going to turn? You're already facing out. Which way do you turn when you face out again? Pass through, face out, partner trade. And uh, there are a bunch of other calls, Grand Square, you can play with and similar things like that. Uh, if anybody would like to see any of these demonstrated, please let us know that too. But, uh, questions as well as ideas are, are most welcome. Yes? We would like a square. Can we get a square up front, please? Of dancers, please. <laughs> I I teach in traffic patterns. Um, I start teaching maybe the second. Oh my God! <laughs> Some squares you have you can't look at. <laughs> I try to teach in traffic patterns and, and everything that I can. I establish traffic patterns. And once my class members learn to identify their partner, I start, I can teach square through without hands. We're assuming that everyone knows that their partner is the person by their side facing the same direction they're facing. Later on it become, can come couples like that. <laughs> but that's still their partner. That can be like that also. 
So your partner is the person by your side facing the same direction you're facing. Let's have the heads. Do you know who you are? The nice ones. We'll use the, the, the couple for we'll the, use for the, the tape, ones. the couple that Ernie's referring we'll to use the smart is, is a Bill and Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've taught the first night how to pass through. I used goal posting the first night, and, and we do songs the first night in goal posting. And, and we use goal posting to teach them to listen because I, I'll say heads pass through and separate round one in the middle, pass through, split two, separate round one in the middle. After I've done that a few times, they're already passed through, but then they back up. So we're teaching them to listen, and that's the first thing you've got to teach. The movements are easy. Teaching people to listen are difficult. So we have to trick them into listening sometime. Not this group, though. Heads, pass through and face your partner. Now you have a new partner. Pass through and face your partner. You have the same old one back. Pass through and face your partner. Pass through. What have they done? Done square through. On the microphone, please. You may. I'm not through yet, but you can comment. Comment on that part of the process, Doug from Ontario. Uh, I would rather have them pass through. That's like a square through one. Now, if you want them to do square through, then face and pass through. I've done that yet. Face and pass through. You you did a. We haven't got that far. Yeah, but what you were doing was the reverse order of that. You said pass through and. Turn to face. Yeah, that's what you do. You pass through, face your partner, and give what, what, when, when I teach it, when I really get into square through, when I get into square through, I'll say, give a right pull by, face your partner, give a left pull by, face your partner, give a right pull by, face your partner, give a left pull by. We have established, we have established a traffic pattern. On the microphone, please. O on the microphone, please. Arnie, I think it's not exactly the same. If we're facing now, the heads, please. Please, please, face in. If we do a pass through, we end up a little bit more out than after a square through one. Yes, I should have her footprints after pass through. When you pass through, when you pass through, you pass barely through. What I could ask at this point is if I'd like to think, uh, let any, Ernie yeah. finish this particular okay. part of it. If there are some of these com com face your comments corner. to help uh, okay. uh, ask questions, yeah. then come back to them. Um, when I teach them to pass through, I'd, I'd say pass barely through. You, you guys should be able to reach back in because you've got another call coming. And when you do a right and left through, you're not going to back up to do it. There's a reason for that. For, uh, for, for the microphone, Daryl said he didn't get to do anything yet. Yes. Sides. Pass through. Barely through. Face your partner. Pass through. Face your partner. Pass through. Face your partner. Pass through. Face your partner. Very good. You're home. Pass through. Face your partner. Face your partner. And pass through. Face your corner. Oh, I really screwed them up, didn't it? <laughs> I made them listen. I said, face your corner. I said, face your corner. <laughs> yeah, I did say it twice. That was just a little drill that we used. I said, pass through, face your partner. Pass through, face your partner. Pass through, face your partner. Face your partner and pass through. This is in identifying partners. And uh, now, everybody... Sides, the good looking. No, no, no. The pretty ones, step forward. Turn your back on your partner. This is the in position of a square through four hands. When I, the night I teach square through four hands, this is what I tell them first. This is your ending position right here. Now face your partner. You're back home. Now we're going to do a square through without hands one more time. Sides. Watch the heads. Pass through and face your partner. Pass through and face your partner. Pass through and face your partner. Pass through. 
We're not looking at our corner, head on with both our eyes. Let's just redo that. Pass through and face your partner. Oh, things look a little different, don't they? Daryl's having to look at his partner. <laughs> Pass through, face your partner. I mean the old partner. Pass through, face your partner. Pass through. And that usually about this time I explain, you know, I lied to you the first night of class. I said, guys, your corner's always going to be on your left. And your girls, your corner's always going to be on your right. I lied to you. I forgot to say if you're facing out, it's a little reverse from that. Do an alaman left. And bow to your partner. One more thing I'd like to throw in while we got them. Um, we were talking this. Now pull your clothes off. We were talking this uh, at another session about, uh, and some callers have told me I call wheel around and no one could do it. I teach wheel around this way from a static square. Heads pass through and wheel around. We show it just like that. My wife and I show it. The left hand dancer backs up, the right hand dancer moves forward. Sides pass through and wheel around. That was great. Everybody wheel around. Twice. You're still on your feet. <laughs> but the thing, the thing I find in teaching, and I am a teacher, I've taught school for many years until I got old enough to retire a year or so ago. <laughs> and the thing about teaching square dancing is you got to have fun with these people. you got to have fun with them. If, if you start saying, I'm God, and, you know, and I'm going to tell you what to do, and you're going to do the way I say it, they're not going to stay with you. They don't have to. Say, Daryl, when you do a right and left through, you give a right pull by, and you call Daryl by name, and he's not going to be back next week. See? <laughs> See? <laughs> we hope that we can get someone to replace you. And I start a traffic pattern, say, for a right and left through. Heads pass through and courtesy turn. They know how to courtesy turn. And we have so many young callers that haven't called very long that would like to do these things in a song. They'd like to get them in this position, but they don't know how. Sides circle up four halfway. So we do these things. And for example, a singing call that you want to do the first night of class, and they like songs too, you know. You don't want to just borrow. You know, this, these are for fun. These are things they can do. Heads pass through. Separate, go round one, come into the middle, pass through, split two, separate round one. You all getting ahead of me. Come get back over there where you belong, Daryl. <laughs> come down the middle and pass through. <laughs> that ain't me in there. <laughs> separate, go round one, into the middle and pass through. Split the outside two, round one, and I do not progress them to the corner of the first night. Everybody swing your partner and promenade. Swing your partner, Bill. <laughs> okay? And what I was telling you a moment ago to, to enhance their listening, the listening process, um, we do it this way. After they're established and they're in their little thing going, heads pass through and separate, round one. Come into the middle, pass through, and usually, usually they're already between these outside two. They're gone, man. So they'll back up, pass, they'll split the outside two and separate round one. Down the middle, pass through and do a courtesy turn. So little things, traffic patterns to me is the way I teach. Anytime I can take a call and establish a traffic pattern, I do that and let them play and they're, they're moving to music and that's what square dancing is, isn't it? Moving to me. Thank you, sir.
Thank you. Before the before Wait, somebody the else goes might, away, somebody else might want y'all. Uh, before the somebody square goes away, there were some con there was a a question or comment on the floor uh, with regard to the difference if you taught the flow on the square through with a pass through turn to face or whether you did an original pass through and then face your partner pass through. So did you want to come back and 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 just to finish off that clarification as a slight per, uh, different feel to that? Just a slight difference. And, and, and show it with the square to see if they feel the difference. And uh, no, I don't intend to do that. I only want to take a moment. Okay. Uh, I also only want to say that on the first evening of introduction, I only teach square through one hand or two. And a week or two later, get on to the three and four. But I, when I square technique. through one, it's like a pass through. When I square through two, it's like a pass through, and then a little bit of a wait, then turn and pass through. Do you get the difference? Okay, so we have that slight variation that might be useful to some folks. Yes, sir. I'm done. Oh, can I say, hey, this is Daryl Clendenin. Uh, I might, just a uh, short addition. Uh, no, I, I don't know anything as fancy as all that. I just teach square through uh, by without the pass-throughs. I use the hands. But I do it as two couples. It, practically everything that I can teach as two couples, I teach as two couples. I isolate the two couples, uh, it seems to uh, be a very, very good way to teach. That, along with the fact that uh, I uh, try to demonstrate absolutely everything that I can, uh, which is practically everything. If the dancers have a chance to take a look and see how it's done, makes it easy. Then if I can isolate the two couples makes it easier. Uh, I know a lot's been said lately about the Sicilian circle, and I like to use that because that changed the, changes the two couples that are working with each other as they go uh, around. I'm sorry to interrupt. What was that term? Caesarian, Caesarian circles. <laughs> 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 Just for, for the tape, and if, if I didn't quite catch Sicilian this. circles. And everybody who's listening to this might not know what that is. That's a circle. Okay. That's a, yes, a circle of facing couples. Okay, A thank circle you. of facing couples. The advantage of that, of course, is you have the couples isolated. I do teach square through on the first lesson. I teach square through three. I teach square through five. The reason I teach those two in particular is as they pull by, they're going to have the advantage of moving on to the next couple. That gets them in the habit of expecting to move straight ahead at the end of their square through. Then when you add the two and the four to it, it comes along quite nicely. But... Uh, one other thing about the square through in particular, when I demonstrate it, I try to impress on them that as they're pulling by each hand and counting, uh, they're already reaching for the next hand before they let go of the last hand. So that way they know that they're turning towards the next person rather than just pulling by and turning away from them. They're already expecting that next hand. There's only one direction they can go to find it. Great. Thanks. Just a second. Bill Stone out of Washington State, and I've been using this thing for 35 years, this uh, circle. Now, <laughs> when I use the, the circle, the thing about it, y'all join hands circle left, would you? Come do an Isle of Man left. Come back and promenade. Don't stop. Don't slow down. Keep walking the girl around. Now... Every other couple, step up alongside the couple ahead of you and stop. Let's see if they can do it. Come on, y'all got to do this right. Bend the line, and you've got lines facing. All right, now I can teach anything I want to do, but separate these couples, because y'all ain't in a couple of four. You got to move over. Get over, yonder. Way over there. Now, what I've got is this, and the beauty part about this form of teaching is this. I can get rid of 
or teach anything I want to teach. I haven't taught right and left through, but I've taught the courtesy turn. And I'm ready to teach right and left through so I can say, shake hands, across, pull by, and courtesy turn. I've taught, and they can't use the wrong hand on shake hands unless I get a left-handed woman, and I had one once. It couldn't start with a right. Now I can even chain the ladies. Same ladies chain, right hand pull by ladies, give a left to the gin, he'll courtesy turn you. If he don't, hit him. So they're separated and they're around the floor this way. But the neat part about this thing, when I get deeper into it and I say flutter wheel, do a flutter wheel, y'all, sweep a quarter. Stop. Yeah. You see what's happened to me here? I can look out here and see that I could pass through and go on to the next two. You follow me? However, the, look at this bunch here. If I say pass through to them, they're going to be standing out here and they're going to look up at you and say, what to? What can I get from that? I can get the fact that they didn't quite complete the figure as they should have. So I can do it again. So the whole floor is showing me did they complete the figure or did they not complete the figure? And I, I, I get it very, that bunch over yonder is right. No, they're done. <laughs> now, if I want, let's do a right and left through here. Y'all give a right pull by and a courtesy turn. Good. Flutter wheel again. Sweep that quarter more. If my circle started as I, no, don't, I don't break it up to get back here. <laughs> if if my circle is normal, I've got inside couples, and these are my inside couples. If you remember, they were circling the alamen left and promenading this way. So these are my inside couples, and these are my outside couples. The easy way to get out of this is very, very easy. Let's have the inside couples split the outside couples. We're teaching them that. Split them. Go, go between them. Separate. Go around one. Everybody do an Isle of Man left and promenade home. Or promenade around. And you've got them right back in the big circle on the floor with no promenade, with no problem. You don't have to worry in this, in this uh, circle. You do not have to worry about who's with who. I take the strongest dancers I've got and put them with the weakest dancers. I can do it as soon as I can teach two ladies chain and pass through. I've got it made. I can, I can move them anywhere in that big circle I want. If I've got a hall completely full of people, it's, it's neat because I can take them around the floor, pass through, go on to new two, pass through, go on to new two, continue that till I get them where I want them. As I teach the figures, uh, I can teach spin anything except spin chain through in, uh, in the mainstream program, trade by. These are the figures that are, take all of them. The grand square takes all. When you stop to think about I believe if I counted them up one time and, and put them in an article, there are 13 figures in the mainstream program that cannot be taught from this circle. All the rest can be taught from the circle. Every figure except those which take all eight people to do are the only figures that you can't teach. Thank you. All right. Uh, Square, why don't you give yourselves a rest? <laughs> we spent a fair amount of time um, on variations with the square through and, and a few other things thrown in there. Would anybody like to uh, throw another move on the table they'd like to talk about? And we'll keep... I see the pretty lady coming up here, yes. <laughs> I didn't really want to talk about square through to begin with. <laughs> Would you come with me? Get up. Could I borrow you two again? Thank you. We, we were talking about two couples together uh, in these circles. I, I really teach a lot in these circles. I love the circles. Circle pour halfway. Veer to the left. Okay, couples trade. Real easy to get new dancers to do this, isn't it? Couples trade again. Because they're holding on, all they're going to do is walk around in a half of a circle. Couples do a half of a trade, bend to face each other. What have they done? A wheel and deal, isn't it? Fear left. 
think about where they're going to be at the end of the wheel and deal. Couples to a half of a trade. Bend to face each other. It's a wheel and deal. Uh, beer left. The couple's facing me. California twirl, please. Now, hold on to your partner really well. And remember, uh, girls, you're going to be passing right shoulders with other, uh, each other. You're going to be facing the wall that's behind you at this point. Holding on to her as couples trade with each other. Walk right over into those footprints. Good. Couples trade again. Couples do a half of a trade and bend to face the wall that was behind you. That's here. Don't bend to face each other. <laughs> Sorry about that. The wall that was behind you. This way. I'm sorry. Beer left. I should have told you ahead of time. You can to please California twirl. Think about the wall that's behind you at this point. You're going to wind up facing it. Do a half of a couple's or half of a couple's trade. Bend to face that wall. The wall that was behind you. What do you have? Okay. Please, uh, you bear left. You bear left. Step up alongside of him here, please. Think about the wall that's behind you. Do a half of a couple's trade. Bend to face that wall. It's a wheel and deal. You don't tell them, uh, you know, the right couple wheels in front of the left hand couple, the left hand couple wheels behind the right hand couple. Do a half of a couple's trade, and any time you do a wheel and deal, I always tell them beforehand that they're always going to turn towards the couple alongside them. They always turn towards the couple alongside them. They always wind up, their ending objective is to face the wall that's behind them before they start. That's an objective. Tell them that ahead of time. Make sure that they know how to do a couple's trade, and you can start teaching that weeks ahead of wheel and deal. You can teach that first night if you like. It's not a real tough thing, especially when you're talking about the two couple sets, and then give them the half a couple tra uh, trade and then turn to face that wall as couple. Thank you. There, uh, thank you. Uh, half a square. <laughs> You had a comment up front. Keith will bring the microphone around. Don Rouse from uh, Boulder, Colorado. I had a tough time when my wife quit going with me to show or teach roll away with a half sachet. In the beginning, I always tell my dancers that the girls, the boys, uh, get all the instruction but the girls do all the work and then, then I make a comment that that's the way it is in real life anyway and uh, I get a little chuckle but in the, they're standing side by side I'll have them in a big circle to start with I say the boys stand still hold your partner's hand now girls step over and face that man hold both hands drop the first hand and keep going until you're on the other side facing back in and that's a roll away with a half sachet. That's the way I teach the roll away with a half sachet. Okay, who's next? We can't have run out of ideas already. Uh, Jerry Coleman from Mammoth Lakes, California. Uh, from Ocean Waves Recycle uh, would be the couples in the center roll to, f I'm sorry, do a U-turn back by rolling the same direction you're holding that right hand and everybody wheel and deal. Anybody want to see that demonstrated just to get the picture in mind? Well, there's, that, that's a, the comment from the back was that's not the definition of the call, but, but I, I might um, make a comment here and, and others if they want to join in on that, that what you use to help the dancers see where they're going, if it works for you, may not be the definition of the call. And so that um, uh, I think the preface up front is uh, that I mentioned is, is that you have the definition of the call that might work for some folks, but you need to build another kind of a picture. Uh, not having any, any big rush to get a square up there to see that, I, that was apparently went okay for everybody. Uh, can I get another hand in the air, another, uh, another call that you'd like to talk about? In the back. 
Uh, we're supposed to be doing, like, doing cutesy things and anything that uh, you can teach. Anything that, okay. not, not just to teach cutesy things, but if okay. in, in the class setting, what gimmicks, what approaches do you use okay. to help, uh, well, to help dancers to, see? And if, to, you, if you'd like a square, we can do that. If you no, don't you don't need a square. really okay. need a square on this. This is something that uh, a caller who passed away a few years ago, uh, when he, uh, Kenny Ferris, uh, Laurel, Maryland, a caller named Paul Hartman that's uh, been, not been with us for about 15 years now, uh, he did a little demonstration on swing one night, and uh, his words were kind of kind of uh, funny, and I use them all the time now. That when you swing, the man will put his left hand out there like he's trying to pick the guitar, and the lady will reach across in front of him and try to stop him. And then the man will put his right hand down there where the small of her waist ought to be. And, 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 then, and then the ladies put their left hand up there where his muscle ought to be. So we insult both people at the same time, but everybody gets a good chuckle out of it, and that's a nice little teach. I've, I've seen variations on that used before work effectively. It, it, doesn't, it, it gets a chuckle. It, it doesn't tend to get anybody incensed. It, it, it's a good approach. In the back. Mel Dixon from Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, my son taught me this one. He said when you do a grand right and left, you're friends. So you take the hand, take one step back, Look and find something distinctive about that person, but never tell anybody, and find it on the other side. Good. You, can, you can extrapolate on that. <laughs> All right. Next, let's get another hand in the air. Keith. Uh, on Follow Your Neighbor. Did you, did you say who you are? Oh, I Keith, did. But. Keith, I'm sorry. Keith Ferguson, uh, Saratoga, California. Uh, on Follow Your Neighbor, I find it works very well to say, it, to emphasize, it starts like a scoot back for everybody, but you do a little bit more. It's, it's kind of a scoot back, you leave off a little bit at the end, and you do a little quarter more. And at least gets them using the right hand, as the, the correct hand, as they do the scoot back. Uh, Kenny Ferris again. Uh, do the same thing Keith does, uh, on both on scoot back and on follow your neighbor. Um, I tell the dancers that are facing, obviously the dancers facing in are going to step forward and turn through with somebody. But the dancers who are facing out are going to step forward and turn through with nobody. And this gets them into the same idea that if, so if they're facing out, they don't have to think, am I running to the right or the left or which way to turn? But this, it's, it's the same action whether you're facing in or out. It's just sometimes you're doing it with nobody, sometimes you're doing it with somebody. And you can take this on the follow your neighbor, it's the same thing. If you're facing in, you're going to step in and turn three quarters. If you're facing out, you're going to step out and turn three quarters with nobody. And it works, and they get it the first time. Thank you. <laughs> Bill Stone again. Uh, on the grand square that we had up a while ago, since we're giving little starters, uh, I often make fun of the grand square by stating that the I want the side couples to face, and we're going to do the grand square. And then I'll say, those of you that are facing the side people, you're so close if you walk forward four steps. You're going to be about waist high, and it's a hard flop to the floor. And those of you that are in the heads position, if you back up when you start this, you're going to be out the door, and we ain't going to need you anymore. And this is sort of the sample of getting them to understand which direction that they're going to go. They're a long ways away, they walk forward. They're very close, they back up when they're facing. And this is something that I happen to use, and they brought up when, with the other explanations here. Okay, next. Can I do a little gimmick thing for uh, teaching? Go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll, need those, I'll need a better square than I had last time. May, may we get another... <laughs> May, may we get another square up, please? I mean, real girls. Four real girls. <laughs> We'd like the same people except for those couple in the rear. <laughs> I use this when I'm teaching slide through, and it's a, it's kind of a, kind of an on Ernie Kenny. I forgot to say that. Gosh, dang it. Oh, this looks much better than that couple we had here a while ago. You got one. Oh, we need a half. There we okay, go. we got a half. We're we're talking about slide through, and of course, 
you can do a slide through with anyone you're looking head on both eyes to both eyes it's got to be and slide through is a, is a call that is no sex I mean you can be either sex and do a slide through it's, it's like star through it's got to be a he and a she slide through it doesn't have to be couple number one and number two ladies face your corner and box the mat number one and number two ladies square your sets not, not just like that heads pass through and separate go up the outside around two round dose hook on the end make a line you can see what we have what kind of situation we have and you got to explain that if you're a boy person you pass right shoulders and turn right if you're a girl person you pass right shoulders and turn left how many know your sex <laughs> not bad <laughs> if you can and I think you're kind of out of position here I believe you're just a little bit out of position here I think you didn't go around two people if you can, and everybody can, all four couples can, slide through. Boys should be holding right hands, girls should be holding left hands with each other. Very good. Remember the call, you must be facing someone head on to do a slide through, and I'm not talking about you facing those people back there. <laughs> if you can, slide through. Something really screwed this up somewhere, didn't it? Let's start over. Get your, get your square back. Something really fouled this up. Number one and two ladies, face your corner and box the nap. No, one and two. Did three do it a while ago, too? No. Okay. New heads pass through and separate up the outside around two and hook on the end. Round two. Oh, she was right. I, 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 I did it. Was the other, <laughs> I did it, it, it was the other. I did. It was the other half that wasn't right. It's the other half that wasn't right. Yeah, that's the half over there. If you can slide through, everybody can. Each time we eliminate one couple. If you can slide through, you can. You're looking at somebody. Get your. Whew, started calling my name. Now we're, we've eliminated another couple, haven't we? If you can, if you're looking someone head on with both your eyes, slide through. Boys holding right, girls holding left. We're down to one now. If you can, slide through. If you can, centers in. If you're looking someone's back, centers in and cast off three quarters. Everybody star through. Zoom. <laughs> they don't know how to do a Dixie Grand yet. You know, they're still in mainstream. Centers, give a right, pull by, give a left to the outside, pull them by, give a right to your partner, pull by, and alamen left. God, I hope that worked. <laughs> okay, I use that in after teaching slide through, I use this for, for practice with same sex doing a slide through. And they have fun with it. They have fun with it. I also have another little thing that I have fun with the dancers with. It's a it's a Yes. On the microphone. How soon after you've taught a slide through from man facing woman would you go into teaching slide through this? Two nights later. Two nights later. Two nights later. After we practice a while, then we then we start playing games like this. Also, I have fun with my dancers. Let me get up here so I can look at these folks. Um, number one and two, do a right and left through. New two o four, go forward and back. New two and o four, do a right and left through. I'm not sure of this, but I'm going to try it. Same two ladies chain. Did this years ago. All four couples half sachet. New number two, go across the square and split number four. Round one, make a line. Forward and back. New number one, go across the square and split number three. Round one, make a line of four. Y'all look like L. <laughs> line facing me, go forward and back. Forward again, stand pat. Forward again and stand pat. What do you look like now? T. T. You've got a little TT around the hall. The four on the side, bend your line, face one another. Start with a left square through. Left square through. Four of the others, bend your line to face one another. And pass through. Left out of man. These are little things that we can use in class. They're basic, isn't it? 
Yeah. Add variety. They reinforce yeah. certain of the concepts you're teaching, and they can be used. Thank you, Square. You can have a seat. We have a comment in the front, and then I want to uh, ask a question here myself. Stephen Cole from Fairborn, Ohio. My question really has to do with some of those single-sex calls. I am probably an anomaly in that I'm the single guy that shows up at the square dance clubs and dances. Usually there are more women than men. What's a good way to help teach some of the women that are men or are dancing as men some of the single sex calls without confusing the whole floor? I just need some ideas. Uh, the slide throughs the, uh, uh, I forget the other two now, but I know they're there. <laughs> if anybody has some experience with that that they would uh, like to comment on that. Bill Stone again asking the question. Uh, I ran into a dance I was calling in L.A. not to, uh, a few years back in which uh, the one of the clubs was taught at the YWCA and the, the uh, caller teaching it required those doing the boys part come dance uh, uh, come with uh, bow tie and, and slacks on and and he taught them all the way through now they got up in front of me and was dancing and that's a rough one for a sight caller to uh, <laughs> watch people all dressed in white especially like that but this is if you've got them that come every week a group of, say, four or five gals and no boys to match with them. This is a neat way to uh, do it. Ask the, the, uh, uh, some gals to dance only the boys' part and then learn the boy. They can learn the girls' part easy later. And, uh, and I know this is being done in several parts of the country. Yeah. Yeah, that's often the technique used, and if you do that, if you ask them to take that class learning the boy's part, then you don't create a situation on the floor where you're trying to figure out how to explain sometimes how to do the boy's part, how to do the girl's part. Those individuals, those ladies would understand that when you're giving direction to the boy's part, and that's the part they're learning, that, that that's a signal for them, uh, and that, that can help uh, eliminate that kind of that situation. I personally wouldn't recommend having people try to learn both parts at once. In the back? Jim Emery, I have that situation also. What I do, I either bring uh, bandanas or cowboy hats. And the women who are dancing the men's part, I give them either a bandana or a cowboy hat, and then they know they are the man. Okay, to slightly change direction here, how about um, uh, what are some calls that you typically considered difficult to teach? Just not, not how you teach them at the moment, but what are some calls, uh, sticking with the mainstream program at the moment, uh, what are some calls you consider typically difficult to teach? Anybody? Yes? Right and left through from an ocean wave. Right and left through from an ocean wave. Anything else? Uh, did I hear circle to a line in the back? Circle to a line. Dixie style. Any others that you consider difficult to teach? One more. We're moving the microphone over. Yeah, Gary Amack, uh, Roar, Colorado. Just taught my first class, and one of the big surprises to me was uh, uh, doing a turn through. You taught them a left aloe man, all of a sudden you try to teach a turn through, and they just stop instead of pulling by. And I thought that'd be a real easy 10 minute teach, and it took weeks, it seems like. Uh. <laughs> All right, with, with those four, as, as example moves on the floor, right and left through from an ocean wave, circle to a line, Dixie style, and turn through, what I'd next like to ask you for, who thinks they've got a good way of teaching any of those that they'd like to share with us? In the back. Uh, on the Dixie, do you want to make a square? So if can... you would like a square, Kenny, for that, sure. I'll go ahead and make a square. Can we get a square up, and you're going to do which one? I'll do Dixie style. Dixie style, if we can get a square up.
for the benefit of the tape, Ernie Kinney's in the square, so if it breaks down, well, I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we go through this, for the benefit of the tape, just describe the action. <laughs> uh, let's say your square just broke down, you've got to make lines of four. Why don't you do the caller lab rule for making lines of four? The caller's up here. <laughs> okay. Uh, th this it starts off when you teach a lady's chain. How many of you are? Uh, do you teach that as soon as the ladies step forward, the gentlemen sort of back step into where she used to be? So if the ladies will step forward, we're just going to do a, la a regular lady's chain first. Ladies chain, gentlemen, you should at that point slide to where the lady used to be and have your left hand ready and turn the girl. Go ahead and do that. So now if we're going to do the Dixie style, I go back to that same teach. The ladies step forward first. Okay, now don't go anywhere yet. Gentlemen, slide over to where she used to be. Have your left hand ready. Girls, pull by. Give a left hand up to the man like you're in a wave and turn a little bit, and there you are. It's like a left hand touch a quarter. And I, when I teach that to people, sometimes I go, oh, my God, I, it's so easy. <laughs> Is that right? Let's do it one more time so you can see it. Uh, boys cross run. Uh, recycle. Star through. Do a right and left through, get a little flow established. Ladies lead, Dixie style, the man backs over, give a left hand, turn a quarter, and you got it. Boom. That's it. Okay. Anybody okay. else want to comment on uh, why we've got it on Dixie style? Are there any other? Uh, on the microphone, if we can. If you encounter the courtesy turn in there for the guy who isn't listening, how do you get rid of it? Well, by telling them that the girls are going to pull by and just do a left touch a quarter, you're giving, well, you're giving them something else to do. I mean, this time you're not courtesy turning. This time you're doing with the left hand, you're turning a quarter. Um, can I have the boys cross run? I just want, Can I do one other while we're here? Nobody mentioned spin the top or fan the top, but an idea I, that I use sometimes is just saying if you think about a clock face, uh, the girls are going to be turning 45 minutes, or the centers are going to go 45 minutes, the ends are going to move up 15 minutes, and you're going to meet, meet the same person. So if you fan the top, the centers go three quarters, go ahead, and the ends move up a quarter, you meet the same person. But sometimes, uh, just relating it to a clock face, you tell the men to move up from the 9 to the 12, uh, sometimes that gets through to a few people. Three seconds? Or, or, or it took Ernie 15 minutes, I thought. <laughs> That's all I got. All right, thank you. Um, Square, thank you. You may sit down. Um, while we're here, can, uh, Ernie would like the microphone back. And his square, I get. No square, just the microphone. I just need Dee Dee. <laughs> um, we were commenting, uh, comment on the roll of half sachet a while ago. Uh, you know, we have... It doesn't just the girls don't, don't don't do that anymore. The boys do it too. We roll the boys away too. And uh, I try to teach my dancers when we're doing the half sachet. Of course, the half sachet is this, and the half sachet is this. To me, it's much smoother than the roll away. But we have roll away, and I always try to tell tell my dancers, my class members. This way. Would you repeat that one more sure. time why he holds the microphone for Be you? Be sure that the outside hands are joined before the inside hands are turned loose. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely pirouette. <laughs> Thank you. Just real quick also on roll away, I think it also helps, uh, it, it helped me anyhow, I just tell people that, that the word sachet just means change sides. And this is just a couple of different ways to do it. You can do it the, just the sachet thing, which in, which in case you, you do just exactly that. You just change sides. Or here's another way to do it. And, and for that particular one, I get on the floor and demonstrate it right to them. I say, this is, this is what I want you to do. But I just tell them right, right, up, right up front that, that the, the sachet thing just means change sides. And then everybody's got this, okay, we're going to just change sides with each other and change places with each other. And then I explain, and now here's how we're going to do it. Here's two ways to do it. Okay. Um, what, roll a, uh, right and left through from an ocean wave. I'll, I'll show you at least what I do with that one. And then anybody else wants to comment? Can I have, uh, I just need two couples for that. <clears throat> two couples facing. I don't care whether your heads or sides. Good. 
and step into a wave if you would. And at this point, you've taught right and left through, so they know what that is. But you can you can ask them to drop hands and step back and see where they are as the partner, the person next to them, and explain that they certainly know how to do a right and left through from there. Go ahead and do that right and left through. Now, just start the right and left through. Just hold right hands, but don't go anywhere. Girls, hold left hands, and you can take a look and see that you're in an ocean wave at this point. Girls, if you drop hands, just complete the right and left through. Pull by, finish with a courtesy turn. And so at this point, step into an ocean wave. Remember where you are, that you're just, you're already part way through. You're already holding that right hand. Finish with a right and left through. So that's the approach I would take on that one. Uh, anybody else want to comment on right and left through from an ocean wave? Yes. Not a comment, but a question. What do you do when you, in the inevitable case where you have, in, in my case anyhow, it's, it's always been one of the ladies, for some reason, turning o- totally away from the, uh, and, uh, what I do, and if that happens, I get on the, on the floor with her, and I kind of guide her into place, and she, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. But inevitably, there's one of the ladies, see, gets, gets into the ocean wave, and then on the, the pull by or the step ahead, one of the ladies, somewhere on the floor right we'll right and, and, and it, away from the, yeah. it invariably happens what I do is I step back out into that thing and show them again who they're turning to face in a right and left through and take it from the ocean wave very slowly and remind them who are you looking for courtesy turn and, and that will help uh, sometimes I note that they're holding on to that right hand too long and they're sort of being led astray by it and so I'll suggest that maybe they drop that right hand just a little bit earlier and start to look for that dancer that we identified is there a comment right up here Keith can we get the where's the comment right, right in our, uh, did you have your hand up yeah right, right in our foursome here right in our foursome when I first Don Rouse again Boulder When I first teach the right and left through, as they give a right pull by, I tell the girls to make a left turn signal and follow that left turn signal to start with. From the or and even from that position, as they do the right pull by, if the guys will kind of lead the lady away from them. In other words, we're going to give a right. If you lead the lady away from you kind of push her in that direction she makes a left turn signal she has about and has fo- to do what follow she the left turn signal and she can't go yeah, wrong right that's the way I do it okay what, was there another yeah. Bill Stone again I uh, I teach uh, uh, the courtesy turn of course by itself and I teach the courtesy turn as the ladies ha- uh, uh, it she has to put her hand out in front of the guy. If uh, he runs into it and it hurts him, well, that's all right. Don't worry about it. You ha- you did it right. Uh, if you pass through and Curtis to turn and the lady sticks that left hand out in front of the guy, he's going to have to take it. And this will stop. It has for me in the uh, in the past. In fact, I teach the man if he's if when I'm going to teach a star through, if he sticks his hand in the girl's nose, why, just take it with either hand you want. And if you wind up wrong, you know who made the mistake. But uh, if you're going to do a star through, the boys should have their right hand inside not directly you see so often they'll stick the hand straight at for doing the star through if you put the hand here the girls have a difficult time of getting to the hand uh, uh, with the wrong hand if you're following yeah and Bill couple, says here he's, yeah, he's putting the hand putting away the, from the body rather than in the body the rather of the body. than directly in front and so I t- certain things I teach it this is the problem of the sex the sex on the courtesy turn it's up to the ladies to get the left hand in front of the gent after the pull by so he courtesy turns them because you're going to follow that hand the same thing with the star through if you put that hand here when you do a star through with that lady she's going to have to use the proper hand or she'll be crossing in front of her face in that manner to get to it and this very quickly teaches them which hand to use Okay, thank you. Uh, Gang, you can sit down if you like. Was there any other comments on that particular sequence before we move on? Okay, circle to a line was mentioned as a difficult teach. Would anybody like to share how they make that go smoother? Man in the back? 
Yeah. Well, he's supposed to identify himself, so. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Daryl Clendenin, Apache Junction. Do you want dancers Arizona. for this? I hope so. I think See. that's sort of difficult to watch. See. Yes. Yes. Can we get a square? Apache Junction, what state? Arizona. Yow. Hi, Ron. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Take my pick. Portland Junction, call of Zona? Or, 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 or Stay Zona? out of this, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Better not. Thank you. Uh, as I said earlier, I teach, I teach practically everything uh, from two couple sets. Uh, I'm going to assume that I've already taught beer left, circle half, and California twirl. Uh, I get over here. I want, I want the heads to do it. He now I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this, but heads lead to the right, circle half. The outside gent only, let go of the girl you're facing. The inside couple, while you continue to hold hands, or I should say both couples, as the inside man continues to hold both girls, uh, veer to the left, and don't do it yet, but as the inside man veers left, he'll also California twirl. Do that. Circle left till you get back home. Okay, side couples lead to the right, face that couple. You circle four halfway. The outside couple let go of the girl you're facing. Both couples are going to veer to the left as they do. The inside man, California, twirls his girl. Do that. Lines of four. Now, Daryl, before you finish with this, we all know that there are certain areas where they sort of give up on that particular styling, and so new dancers need to, need to learn another variation. How do you handle that? I don't teach another variation. This is according to the definition. This Correct. is what I teach. I don't teach another variation. Do you do any? But I'm asked, But do you do anything to prepare them if they, I don't, if they hit I, that on the floor? I don't know how to do the other one myself. I, I wouldn't have the slightest idea how to dance it myself. Therefore, I don't know how to teach it. All right. It. Well, let's leave it at that at this point then. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I, think we'll, I think for the purposes of right now, we'll move on. We'll leave that off the... Off the uh, uh, we'll go with Daryl's comment. In front. I guess this is directed to Daryl. How do you explain which person breaks to make the line? The outside gentleman let go of the girl that you're facing after they circle half. This is a walkthrough. Yeah. Uh, the outside man is always the one. Uh, you don't have to have heads lead right circle to a line. You can have head couples square through four. You can have four ladies chain. You can. Uh, you might not even, by looking out there, know which one, uh, whether it's going to be the head man or the side man that's on the outside. As long as you're in an eight chain through formation, you can circle four to a line. So uh, the idea of always saying head men break or side men break or something like that, throw it out. Uh, teach them to where they're going to circle half. The outside man's going to let go of the inside lady. They're going to break out to the line of four at that point. Does that yes. clear it up? Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. Another question or comment on the front? Uh, just a, yeah, also a comment on that. Um, Ron Marcus from Tucson, Arizona. By the way. Um, I don't ever teach or try to keep separated the two moves lead to the right and circle to a line. And now whenever I do teach circle to a line, it's from the the A, and the a chain through position because I, uh, what I do is I get them into the A chain through position or the A chain, a chain through formation and then, and then explain that the, it's the man who is inside now is going to be the one doing the breaking when he gets outside. And I go through a lot of explanation and, and again, on the floor demonstration of which man is going to do the letting go. 
and and uh, but this California twirl, the Veerlef California twirl, I'd have to rearrange my seating order just a little bit. <laughs> but it's a good idea. I like the idea. But uh, I, I, again, what I'm trying to say is I, I, I stay away from uh, lead right circle to a line because after a while, dancers begin to think that one must be done after the other, and that, that I don't want them to think that. Good point. All right. Any other comments on this particular step? Um, I like this one. Um, how many of you think that we could do without that call? Why can't we lead right, veer left, bend the line, right and left through, and have the same thing? I think thing? that's another topic, though. I we're know we're, we're but, working uh, on how to. I, I think <laughs> you're I think saying think one way to teach it easily is not teach it at all, but that's not the well, purpose of the Well, I agree with Daryl on that slide to a line <laughs> thing, but but I think this is one call that we could do without. Perhaps. All right, another one. Turn through was put on the table as a difficult teach. Uh, or turned out to be more difficult than anticipated. Is, would anybody like to put their uh, idea of turn through on the table? Any takers for turn through? I don't know any particular secret to turn through myself. It is one of those um, um, calls where, first of all, dancers have to know what halfway is. Because oftentimes what happens on, one of the evils of turn through to me is if you only go turn through Alaman left, you never teach them what the proper position is. And so you should turn, you should teach turn through without immediately following by an Alaman left so that you can at least demonstrate what the final position of that is. At which point you need to make sure your dancers really do know if they're turning half, if they, are turning halfway that it's got to be the wall behind them, that they've got to do a full. It's amazing. Whether you need to go with 50 cents or 30 seconds or the wall behind you, it doesn't really matter. And then it's drop hands and take a step forward. And the only thing I can, I do in my own teaching is to at least repeat that many times to help them see where the ending position is. And the last thing I will show them is to go to an Alaman left from a turn through. And a comment was a hand in the air right up here. Well, I just tell them to turn around. That's where you're going to end up. This is where you start. You're going to turn around and face the opposite wall. Now we're going to trade with the person in front of us first and then come back to that spot. Okay. You're going to stand in the same footprints that you had before, but facing the opposite direction. On the side. Uh, for practice, Larry, I, I teach turn through, separate round one into the middle, turn through, split, you know, goal posting, just for practice. Any other moves that people would like to ask questions about that you're not sure of how to teach and you'd like some pointers? Uh, on the microphone? Okay. Um, Ernie, you're asked for a definition, yeah. a, a definition of goal posting. <laughs> so for anybody listening to the tape that isn't sure what that is, but make sure you get the microphone from Keith. If the heads are the active people, the sides act as goal post. Heads pass through, separate, go around, post, come into the middle, pass through, split the outside two. Yeah, that's goal posting. And uh, it's people it's people moving people moving to music and you start the first night first night okay any other moves that anybody would like to ask questions about to see if somebody can help them over a rough spot in the back Hello, Ernie. Virgil Forbes from Laurel, Maryland. I'm sorry I came in late. I was in and out to a couple other committees. Uh, like to reopen Recycle for just a minute. Uh, for about the last four years, in reading the Caller Lab definition and looking at the computer screen, I have been teaching it as an ends cross fold center zoom with motion to the right or left, depending on which wave we're in. And that gets the correct body flow by the caller lab definition using a call they've already learned. Anybody else have a, qu a call they'd like to ask a question about? Or have another simple trick for teach? Hi, Mel Dixon again from Reading Mass. 
Uh, I'd like to ask you honestly, how many of you people here ever have a senior moment? <laughs> a, a, a senior moment? <laughs> With the demographics that we have today of our dance population, many of us have senior moments. And as you're doing a dance, you draw a blank. So my expression is to have them put their elbows firmly at their waist and their handles out. I say, when in doubt, put your handles out and pray. Take a half a step forward. Hopefully, the opposite dancer will know which hand to grab. And girls, this is self-protection. means the guys know what to grab. <laughs> Are there any other uh, questions, comments, or move that you'd like to, to talk about over on the side? Gordy Zeman from Wisconsin. I'm surprised nobody mentioned it with the slide throughs. Uh, I have a little comment that I make. I'm sure a lot of you use it, or most of you use it, that kind of gets, gets it ingrained in their, in their minds, the, the dancers that when you do a slide through, remember the boy is always right. <laughs> and it does, that's the same kind of reaction yeah, you get from yeah. the class, but they'll remember it. The girl always turns left. And then uh, occasionally I'll get a, a class, that I'll have a, a fellow that wants to courtesy turn on the square through. And when that happens, what I do is I get them in a boy's square through or girl's square through separately and run that for a little while. And the fellows will generally get the idea real quick when they got a, and they're squared through with another fella. They're not going to courtesy turn this this fella. Just a little something. It does work. Yeah. yeah if you're going to do uh, just the boys square through or just the girls square through, it's important to remember that the pathway and the way you're turning, depending on which side of that couple is on, is different. So that you want to put the boys, you want to switch them at some point so they see both pathways at that point. That yes, might be but helpful. it's very effective to, to eliminate that courtesy turn. Just gets their attention real sure. Sure does. Uh, question or a comment up front? Who was it? Bob Jones, Troy, Ohio. The fastest way I've found to eliminate that courtesy turn when you have that one or two people out of every other lesson class that wants the courtesy turn on your square through four is have them do this in their mind. Count one, two, three, four. Walk. That gives them the directions. You've already taught them their nose, which way to follow their nose, okay? To walk. Have them say that. That one person just say that. One, two, three, four. Walk. That eliminates that courtesy turn because he, he's got that courtesy turn wanting to come up there. It will work every time. For that one or two people that you have that you can't, yep. that you can't, every, you've tried everything else. And we always Last have resort. them. resort. And we always have them. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Uh, John Chevalier, uh, on the recycle, there's a, another way to get a traffic pattern coming from, I believe it's on the challenge list, uh, two thirds recycle. Hinge, out face, or fold, take two steps forward and face to the right. It gets you the traffic pattern without in using calls or, or terms that they already know. And once they get the traffic pattern, then you can start into the cross fold and have the girl follow. We'll take a couple more as we start to get down towards the witching hour. Another one on recycle. At one of these caller lab sessions about 10 years ago, uh, some uh, I'm not, don't remember who it was. You can, if you're in the room, take your own credit for it. But they said that the center dancer on the recycle, as we know, they're supposed to fold and follow. We tell that uh, person to act like a dog trying to fit, find a place to lie down. <laughs> that makes them remember anyway. I have one question of my own on the recycle. By definition, recycle is a no-hands move. A lot of dancers see it as a hands move. How do you deal with that, anybody? Or, and in terms of teaching, you would certainly teach it as a no-hands move, but does anybody have anything they do to, with that to try to keep the proper styling in place? Or I'm just curious if anybody has a helpful hint there. It's a no-hands move by definition. On the dance floor, uh, rarely is it seen as a no-hands move, and I just wondered how, how, you, how anybody might react to that. In the back. 
Yeah, Gary Amack. I think callers are responsible for that. I, I don't have any suggestions, but you hear the the patter saying uh, recycle. Hey, drag them on around, or hey, bring them on around, and that that tends to lead people to believe that it is a hands maneuver. So the first uh, trick there is to throw drag them on around out of your vocabulary. Right. Take the, yeah, retrain the caller, and then you'll be <laughs> retrain all right. the caller, and we'll have the dancers doing it correctly. I see a hand over here on the side. Yes, Gene Record from right here. Um, where, where is right here? Right here, right here. I'm about five minutes from home. I get a badge for being the closest. <laughs> um, and recycle, uh, the way I teach it is uh, if the in person will give a little push, that lets the center person know which direction to go. Also, that person, if, if you're in a right-handed wave, stick the right-handed out and follow it around to a 360 degree turn so in other words when you give the little push and cross fold for the end person you don't have a handhold until that other person has come around and you've joined as, as a partner okay thank you in the back we'll take about one more about about this, this Daryl Clendenin as long as you're on recycle I'll tell you how I generally teach it I usually do it in two parts. I teach the end part first. I tell them to uh, do a cross fold and get them to that point. Uh, I have them take their large toe, scratch an X on the floor where they are, uncross fold. They go right back to where they were. Okay, I have before they ever move, I have the centers take their big toe and scratch an X on the floor where they're standing. And then I explain to them that they're going to step in behind that end, follow them all the way around, right back to where they started from. And when they're all done, I want everybody right flat on their X. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a good one to close on. That was <laughs> was that X-rated? Uh, yeah, I think so. What I'd like, just a, a couple of uh, final comments. I think we we I, they were said in the beginning, but to reemphasize them, anytime you're teaching, uh, one of your number one attributes is your patience. Uh, keep it fun for the dancers. Don't single out dancers. I think that was mentioned earlier. Don't single out by name and embarrass people when you're when you're calling, uh, when you're teaching. Um, and remember, when you're teaching, at least uh, you haven't taught anything if your dancers don't know how to do it. You've taught something when they have actually learned it and they can do it. And you need to continue through until you know your dancers have have that skill. Um, and if they are having trouble on the floor. Um, don't just blame the floor for not knowing what they're doing. Blame the caller for having for not knowing what you're doing or or anything you want to sort of defuse the situation. I often say, can we walk that one again? I want to see it again. I need to see it for me. Uh, don't blame the dancers. I'd also like to thank you all for participating. That's what made this a full session and I think a successful session. So give yourselves a hand. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>